Thank you, uh, Yasser. Yes, I'm here with Aryan Tari, who is a two-time Norway national champion 2015 and 2019. He's also a grandmaster, a very good one at that, world junior champion, and the list goes on. Uh, but uh, he's in a different role here in Bucharest. Tell us a little bit about uh, that. First of all, welcome to the show, and tell us a little bit about Thanks, that. Thanks, Christian. Um, yeah, it's a new role here. Uh, first time, actually, I'm a, I'm a second, so uh, it's very interesting for me to try this. Uh, I'm just used to play professionally myself, but uh, when Anish asked me to help him, I was just uh, very happy for the opportunity. Because also these days you don't have a lot of tournaments, so I, I wasn't too busy. Uh, so, How is that for you? Because we know you, you've been playing chess for a very long time, but as a coach or a <laughs> trainer or a second... It's really, di it's really different, the mentality. And uh, so on. You, when you go to a tournament, you're so used to uh, play, but when you uh, prepare, it's a completely different uh, e experience. Yeah? So you work these uh, long hours in the, in the night and not so much sleep, uh, but you just do your, do your best to... So Anish will do as well as possible. Actually, um, tell, I, us I like bit, it. tell me a little bit about the schedule. When do you sleep usually? And uh, here it's been like maybe. I'm four curious to compare it with mine <laughs> back when I was. Uh, uh, here it's been 4 a.m. usually. 4 a.m. Yeah, wow. then I wake up for breakfast at 10. He's really working you hard. Uh, yeah, I'm just trying trying to do my my best to uh, to help him. Yeah. Very good. You're here for the first time in uh, Bucharest. That's what, correct. What do you feel about? How do you feel about the city? Uh, actually, we just one day went to explore the city. Almira showed us showed us a lot, so that was very nice. But besides that, we've been just walking around the hotel. Uh, but uh, on the rest day, we saw some nice buildings. We went to a coffee house. Uh, we ate in a nice restaurant. So that was really enjoyable. Very nice. Let's get into chess. Um, let's look at this game between Anish, your pupil, let's say, <laughs> and uh, MVL. What can you tell it's us about this? Give us some insights. Interesting position. Like these positions are very similar to the Grunfeld. Uh, but the thing is, usually the pawn is on e4 in the in the Grunfeld. But here it's uh, it's on e3. So so MVL has been playing this move order, this English move order. That's correct. MVL five. usually always plays this uh, move order. MVL is a player who always plays the same openings. Usually he doesn't really change so much his uh, repertoire. Um, so we did expect this uh, opening today, and uh, yeah, this was our, our preparation. And he actually played uh, this MVL that is against Jakob Venko, if I'm not mistaken. That's that's correct. Yeah, this Queen A5 move. Uh, I'm pretty sure sure we had it. Like in general, we we studied these types of position. I think we look at we look at Knight C6 here, Queen C7, um, yeah, Queen A5. Uh, also, these types of position we, we, we looked at, but uh, it was a lot of move orders, so I'm not so surprised Anish uh, spent some time. But in general, I think these positions are a bit easier to play for white. Like, white has some more space, so... What is the general plan behind the white's uh, structure? Like, you sometimes go h3, you try to time e4 at the, at the right moment, uh, and then you, then you take, take space, maybe you play e5. It really depends. You play rook b1, provoke b6. I think this is and, what uh, we have on the board yeah, right very, now. Very often you go a4, you put the bishop to a3. It does a, does a good job there. Just uh, black can be a bit passive sometimes, and uh, uh, he has to be accurate. For so sure. I, I think this rook b1 uh, provoking b6 also aimed at potentially placing that bishop on a6 once the knight goes to c6. Definitely. Like sometimes, uh, like let's say if the rook goes here or something, you might go bishop a6 and distract the rook. There are a lot of these... Uh, possibilities in, in some positions. Yeah. So, yeah, this bishop can be annoying. Sometimes it goes to b5 to distract the, distract the knight. Also, black always have to think about d takes c5. So, in general, I think objectively speaking, black is uh, black is solid, but uh, it's a bit easier to play to play white. So, it's it's a risk-free uh, slight edge, I would say. Absolutely. As a, a trainer, do you feel uh, some of this preparation will translate into your games as well? We'll see. Obviously, as a, as a second, you hope you can also use it your, yourself. Uh, so it's uh, so I'll also learn from these openings. Although my, some of these openings I maybe usually don't play myself, but suddenly I can play them. Yeah. Speaking of uh, you playing, what is your uh, next tournament? I'm playing the World Cup, which uh, starts pretty soon. It's just one month. <laughs> and if people want to follow you, where, they, where can they follow you? The World Cup? Sure, the World Cup, but also social media, and um, we know the new generation is pretty big on social media. Yeah, no, I have Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram. Just, uh, just my name, Ariantari. 
Um, and yeah, I mean, my tournaments, they all go live, so you can follow there. But in general, my social media, I mostly post on Instagram. Yeah. There or, you or have Twitter it. also I am, but not so active. <laughs> there you have it. Thank you very much for joining us, and good luck in your uh, preparation for Thanks, next Christian. few games. Thank you.